We all need to know. That's why we're here every Friday at 1 o'clock. It's the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John on Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. It's all you need to know to be in the know. That's right. Yeah, I'm just making sure you knew that. I knew now, that. you know, it's interesting, you know, Doug, just like your rant, mm-hmm. um, we haven't talked politics yet. That is, Maybe I, that's I, why I'm feeling kind of... I, I thought of sorts, something was... Out yeah, of sorts, yeah, out yeah. Of you know, yeah. you have something going on, you just can't pinpoint what it is and... Well, you know, yeah. as soon as I get to the bottom of it, I, I'm very upset about this. And as soon as I get to the bottom of it, I will investigate it, and I'm not going to stand for it. Ooh. And are you angry? And I'm angry. <laughs> now, how many scandals, Mr. President, have you been angry about? Oh, <laughs> don't do No, 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 no. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Isn't that true, though? I mean, it's, it's okay, and, and, commander and, in chief, okay, leader of the country, president, and doesn't know what's going on? Yeah. Until and the until he reads it in the paper. That's what you know, and that's the way it was with the uh, um, NSA scandal, the uh, IRS scandal, the IRS Benghazi, the VA scandal, know, the this MOUSC is the, this scandal. Is the first I heard about it. Yeah, I, I just, found out about when you did. Yeah, it's and like I'm the, angry, and I'm, there's you know, and he says there will be uh, repercussions if people need to lose their jobs, they will. How many people lost their jobs? I don't think too many people lost their jobs yet. No, and that lady who took the fifth, the, the yeah. IRS scandal for absolutely no reason. Yeah. I don't understand that one. But the thing that kills me with, with the VA, the, the current one, the oh, Veterans yeah. Administration. Okay, now, uh, that's the whole big spiel that, that there's secret waiting lists for medical procedures, or secret waiting lists for medical procedures. Right. Mm-hmm. There's ways to jump the line and, right. and get better treatment than anybody right. else. And I don't know how they figure all that out. Uh, I wonder, first of all, first thing I wondered is, well, isn't that just like any other large hospital? And then I thought, no, probably not, because if there was, there'd be investigations and yeah. regulations. And okay, I get that. Yeah. So then I thought, well, maybe it's just a cent- you know, I, I took a page, page out of your book. Maybe it's government being too big. You think? But then I you thought, you mean too big and mismanaged? I, I, that's what I thought. But then I yeah. thought it's the veterans. Yeah, and that's the sad part. Which is the sad part. Yeah. And then I started to hear both sides mm-hmm. of the aisle, politicizing it. Right. Oh, the veterans this, all the veterans that, all the veterans this. We're not going to stand for it. We're not going to stand for it. We're not going to stand for it. Meanwhile, they're sitting there not standing for it. Yeah. They're going to they're look into it. Yeah, they, as, which as, is exactly what they should do. people are dying. But. What was, I heard one senator was like, oh, fine, we'll, we'll pass a bill. I need 100 people to vote for it. I'm going to pass a bill that if you live outside of the scope of the, the hospital, you can go to your doctor. We'll pick up the tab. Not a problem. That didn't pass. No. Nope. Would have been something. But, you know, like you said, though, I'd like to get to the bottom of this. And I think we can a little bit with our next that's, two That's guests. right. You have, yeah. you have your son. Yeah. Who's I a, think who's we a, have him on the line. Parker, are you there? I'm here. Parker oh. Sutton just got out of the Army, what, two months ago? Uh, yeah, two and a half. Yeah. So what, County. what John and I want to do, we thought we would want to um, get your perspective on you, because you've had a lot of dealings with the um, VA since you got out of the Army. Uh, tell us in general, what you, are you hear, seeing or hearing anything when you're with your experiences with them that we've been hearing on the national news? Um, the clip that I, that I go to off the 405 here actually pretty good. I mean, uh, the peop- usually the lines aren't long like for anything to wait to see specialists. Like, maybe a week or two, which from my experience was kind of the same same waiting period it was before I joined the Army, just like with the regular hospital or a uh, any medical group. Hey, but, Parker, uh, Parker, hang on. I think we're having uh, landline problems with you, okay? Can we put you on hold a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think the, uh, the, the thing I think Parker was trying to tell you, which is kind of interesting, is that there is that big facility off the 405, right? And that facility off the 405, if you're waiting a week, you can go to a regular hospital, you wait a week. I mean, I had to wait a week to yeah. get MRI results. But from what I read and heard what was happening, I guess it's where this really got started was in Phoenix, at the VA there, yeah, and these gentlemen there had some very serious health issues. That if they were, um, if they were in a regular hospital, I don't think they would have had to wait so long. Well, okay. I don't know for sure. Now, and I heard, I heard some of the information. I mean, you hear all kinds of different stories, and everybody is politicizing it all over the place. But the thing that kills me is, is if these people were going to, or were, were very, very terminally sick, terminally ill anyway. Um, was it the quality of care or not? 
So, I mean, I, I don't know. And it's yeah. the doctors. You know, are the doctors better or worse? Or I, think, I, think, I think we have Parker back and see if we fixed our problem. You there, Parker? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Ah, much better. All right, so you were saying that you were waiting about a week for to see a specialist. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's average. Depending on what specialist, it can be like a month. But um, I've also been told by other veterans that have been out a lot longer that what they do, typical, uh, is uh, when, you're, when you're fresh out of the service, they, they pay a lot more attention to you for whatever reason. But she, a lot of people have told me once you've been out for a few years and, like, they know you, like, um, good luck ever, like, getting, any, getting seen at all. Wow. That's what I've been told. Wow. Now, see, that's kind of so sad. They told me, you know, if you have anything serious, like, tell them right away because the longer you wait, um, they, they like to treat people that are just get out really well for whatever reason, and then they just kind of move on, I guess. Wow. That's what I've been told. I haven't experienced that yet. Hopefully not. Hopefully yeah. I don't. But Now, with your experience, because I know you had an injury from the, when you had the truck accident in Afghanistan, but are they responsive to that, or is there a long delay for that? Do you feel like if you were in a lot of pain, would they have been more quickly responsive, or what's your opinion there? No, not really. The thing with them, too, they don't. They, there's really a lack of communication. I mean, all of my medical records got sent from the Army to the VA when I got out. Like right. just how everybody else right. is. Exactly. When I go there and talk to them about my problems, they don't have no no one there has any idea. It's like either they never looked at them or they never got my records. It's kind of like I just have to start all over again with these doctors. So it just sounds and like they, a it sounds like it's a big bureauc- bureaucracy. Yeah. I mean, and I, even the the different specialists within the facilities they don't really talk to each other. Oh jeez. And it's just, it can be pretty frustrating. Wow. Okay, Parker, thanks for your insight. Yeah, thanks. That's interesting. Okay. All right. You know, Doug, I think that's part of the problem. Is You know, John, uh, we don't have time, but this kind of goes back to what I'm talking about with my shuttle experience at LAX. I mean, I know, but it's just, it's... um, it's Bigger is not always better. No kidding. There you go. All right. The government has no business being in business. Uh, I think you might be right there, too. All right. You're listening to Santa Clarita's hometown station, Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John on AM 1220 KHTS. We are back, everybody, at Santa Cruz's hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. It's Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John, the Radio Digest version of Santa Cruz Gazette and Free Classifieds. For all you need to know to be in the know. You got it right twice <laughs> in one show. That's I can't pretty impressive. No, no, Doug, that's interesting. Uh, your, your son Parker and, and the fact that he just got out and right. is sort of mm-hmm. experiencing problems with the VA. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk to one of our veterans coming up on Memorial Day. Right. I think it's awesome. We have Mr. Dick Jeffries on the line, I hope. Mr. Jeffries, are you there, sir? Sure am, sir. Yes, this is a, this is the man I call sir, <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. Jeffries. Now, Mr. Jeffries, you were in the Marines, is that right? Yes, sir. How All long? Right. How long ago? Uh, that was 1968 and 69, Quang Nam Province in Vietnam. There you go. Well, that could have its own show uh, in and of itself. I bet someday. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> things that you can tell us about, things you probably can't tell us about. Um, say what? Say that again one time. There's probably things you can tell us about and things you can't tell us about. Uh, okay, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell us, but you'd have to kill us. Um, question for you. Have you have you had any dealings with the VA and the Veterans Administration and the hospital and this whole scandal thing that we're dealing with? Yeah, I have. Um, it took me about 11 years to get the benefits that I fought for over and over and over again, which is not a, a rarity. That's kind of a commonplace. Oh. And uh, a few years back, they had a TV special, I think, on CBS that was called uh, Delay, Deny, Hope You Die. And the problem, <laughs> wait, the problem is they wait, tell Mr. you Jeffrey, you're sick and Mr. then they make you prove it. Can you say that again? What the name of the show was? I did it, delay, deny, and hope you die. Man, wow! So when the scandal broke on the news this last week or so, I take it you were not surprised. Not at all. Jeez, not that, at all. You know, the, the problem is that the people go in there not knowing what to do, not sure if they had something wrong. They're, they're you know, they're. They're told maybe they have something wrong by a regular doctor. They can't afford to pay a regular doctor, so they go and they use their VA many times against their uh, against their wishes because they don't want to be a burden on anybody or, or take charity right, anyway. Exactly. But you know, that's all of a sudden you find yourself in a position that's not an enviable one. Wow. So why did it take you eleven years to get the service you needed? Do you think? 
uh, I can give you a list of names. You can ask them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This could be an expose in and of itself. All right, so let's look at something a little bit more exciting. Uh, you got a lot of, of local involvement, don't you? You've yes, I do. I'm in a number of different organizations that help veterans. That's awesome. Uh, and one of them, I, uh, you were, was it, was it Take Me Back? No, you were taking, I know you were taking veterans back to different battlefields. Are you still doing that? Well, yeah, here's what we do. We take, um, if it's possible to take people back to a, a battle zone, we will, but, you know, it's not exactly possible in Iraq and Afghanistan. Right. So we primarily uh, look at doing it in Vietnam. And uh, what we found was uh, through many of us who have been able to make a trip back there, that it has a remarkable uh, uh, effect on people, a curing and healing effect, and more so than all these uh, uh, encounter sessions or drug rehabilitation sessions or whatever. Or any of the because team- what happens is you yeah. go back with buddies or family, right? And uh, when you go back there, you get. Uh, you, inter- you interact with people there, and it interferes with the triggers that normally trigger PTSD. Right. Whether it was from fear or trauma or whatever or terror, um, it triggers it. And so when you're over there, we set it up to where we lay the rest. Uh, we will read the names of those who have fallen, and then we'll set up a, a, a pop-up and get some food right. and invite the villages out and uh-huh. kind of play with the kids a little bit. So now the picture you have of Vietnam it's completely isn't different. one of loud noises, flashes, people dying. It's one of, of kind of horsing around with, with the same type people. So it, what it does is it short circuits that problem and lets people go a different direction with those triggers and sometimes stops the triggers altogether and they just completely lose all of their their um, uh, again, we'll go back there. We're trigger, yeah, back triggers. all the triggers that yeah. that would spur on that PTSD. Uh, wow. Uh, episode, Mr. Jeffries. Um, PTSD, as far as I'm concerned, became more in the public awareness since Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. But how prevalent was it from the guys coming back from Vietnam? Well, PTSD or shell shock or you know, yeah. all those different words that have been given to it over the years has been around in every single war we've oh, ever absolutely. been in. Because, you know, the human mind can only handle so much stress and and so much loud noise and so much terror. You know, you, you just can't handle it. But what happened was they would just kind of tell you before, unless you had a really severe case of it, they just go man up. And that's what we all kind of did. And then you all of a sudden you find yourself, you can't get that promotion at work. Or you're flipping right. out when you're in traffic, or uh, your wife goes to just gently roll over and just to kind of bump you and say, "Honey, it's time to get up," and you, will, yeah. you know, you throw her off the bed. So right. it became more and more prevalent with us in some ways in Vietnam vets because because of the way we came home, you never came home to that Johnny comes marching home again kind exactly. of an acceptance. Exactly. It was uh, we weren't accepted by society right. and. Most of the guys threw their uniforms off and grew their hair long and kind of retreated. Retreated, from, exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's not a good thing. Now, Mr. Jeffries, what's the name of that charity? Uh, it's Back to the War Zone. Back to the War Zone. How do people get involved if they're interested? Well, they can, they can look on my site at backtothewarzone.org and, um, and either call or, or send an email through that. And my email is just uh, admin1 at backtothewarzone.org. And they, they say, hey, I'd like to be involved, and uh, we can set you up to maybe go on trips back there, uh, taking veterans back to Washington, D.C. to see their monuments for the first time, or uh-huh. taking them back to uh, the war zone. It just depends on how much money we raise. And uh, there's a hundred different things we can use your help on. And I'm, I'm very pleased to talk to anybody who wants to listen about the benefits of what we're attempting to do here. Hey, Mr. Jeffries, can you, we're up against a break. Can you hang on for us over the break? Oh, of course. Because okay. I know that's not all. All right, you're listening to Santa Cruz Hometown Station AM 1220, KHTS, the Gazette Radio with Doug and John, and we'll be right back.